Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, hope you've all been doing well. In this video, we'll be revisiting some benchmarks that I conducted around the time Ryzen first generation processors were released. Back in 2017, AMD took the market by storm by launching the Ryzen 1000 series processors, where they offered high core count CPUs at less than half the cost of what Intel was offering. I was in the midst of upgrading my i5-6600K, where I was highly considering getting a 7700K and dropping it into my existing Z170 motherboard at the time. But I was very intrigued and was really happy with what AMD were able to accomplish with their Ryzen processors. So as soon as they hit store shelves, I ordered myself an 1800X. Now it's been almost two years since the first generation Ryzen processors were released, and back then, like any other new platform, Ryzen and AM4 motherboards had quite a lot of issues, where users were having many issues with motherboards such as running higher memory speeds, games needing optimization, and there were even some reports back then stating that Microsoft's Windows scheduler wasn't properly utilized for Ryzen, so there was an update that was uh, needed. Since then, there have been countless updates and overall, the platform is a lot more stable. BIOS updates have allowed users to properly tune their CPUs, run higher clocked memory with Titan subtimings to reduce latency, and software updates have been pushed to take advantage of Ryzen's high thread count. So, what I want to do is revisit some of the benchmarks I did when I had gotten my Ryzen processor and run the same tests again and compare the scores. This way, I can compare the results I get now with older results and see if they may have improved, and if they did, then how much of an improvement we're going to be looking at. The new results we'll be taking a look at will be conducted with my 1800X overclocked and my RAM tuned, because this is the other factor we're trying to take into account. With all the BIOS and microcode updates and optimizations done that allowed users to tune their Ryzen system further, did that provide any sort of performance uplift? I could change everything back to stock, but then what would be the point? As for the rest of the specifications, the motherboard that the 1800X is installed on is the Gigabyte AX370 Gaming 5 motherboard. And for the CPU cooling solution, I've got a Noctua NHD15 dual tower cooler. For the RAM, we've got 16GB of G-Skill Trident Z running at 3333MHz with a cast latency rating of 14, and tighten the subtimings as well. These will be the most relevant specs, but if you want to know the rest of the system specifications, you guys can check the video description down below. The first benchmark we're going to be taking a look at is Maxon's Cinebench R15, a very popular CPU benchmark. This benchmark makes the CPU recreate an image using path tracing. For multi-threaded performance, the 1800X at launch with tuned settings scored 1771, and now I was able to attain 1809 an improvement of 38 CB or 2%. Similarly, we see the single threaded score also increase by the same margin, where at launch the 1800X scored 161, and now I can attain 165. For most of the benchmarks, I'll be comparing the overclocked scores, but the stock scores will also be there just for reference. W Prime 1024 is next, and here the time it took the CPU to complete the benchmark was measured, where it goes through a whole bunch of calculations. The Tune 1800X at launch took about 97.9 seconds to complete the benchmark, and now it was able to complete the benchmark in 94.4 seconds, an improvement of 3.5 seconds. Moving on, we're going to be taking a look at CPU-Z. Now when Ryzen first came out, there was an older version of CPU-Z out at the time, and the included benchmark was different than the one they use now. One of the reasons why they changed it was because Ryzen was scoring just generally faster than its Intel counterparts, CPUs, so they quote unquote had to fix the benchmark so it would reflect real world performance in a sense. Regardless, I can't compare the new version scores with the scores I had from two years ago so naturally I re-downloaded the previous version that had the older benchmark and had to compare it that way. The 1800X at launch scored 2334 for the single core score and 20641 for the multi-core score. Now two years later the score has increased but just barely, where the single core score has increased by 8 points at 2,342, and the multi-core score increased 194, yielding a score of 20,835. So it's really nothing to write home about. Up next, we have Passmark's CPU test. The CPU benchmark makes the CPU run through numerous tests involving prime numbers, floating point, 
physics, sorting, encryption, and more. At launch, the 1800X scored 16,760, and now, two years later, the score I had attained was 18,211, an improvement of 1,451, or an increase of 8%, which is significantly higher than the differences we saw from the previous benchmarks. The next benchmark we'll be taking a look at is Ida64's CPU Queen. Now, not much needs to be said about these results. The difference between the launch 1800X score and the post 2 year score is only 1%, where launch score was 92,581 and the updated score was 93,457. The last benchmark we're going to be taking a look at is POV Ray. This benchmark creates a render of an image and determines CPU score and performance by the average pixels per second. At launch, the 1800X scored 3,752.5, and the post 2 year score has improved by 1.8%, or 70.3 pixels per second, which is 3,822.8. Again, it's another improvement overall, but not anything spectacular. So, there you guys have it. After seeing all the benchmark results, can we say that Ryzen has gotten faster since launch? Yes, but it's not a huge improvement. The only benchmark which showed a significant uplift was Passmark, but if we take into account the other results, then on average we're looking at around a 2% increase. And that's to be expected because we are talking about an 8 core 16 thread processor here. There was already so much CPU horsepower to begin with. Nonetheless, it was nice to see at least some kind of an improvement. Whether it was from BIOS updates, chipset drivers, Windows updates, scheduler optimizations, or perhaps it was a mix of things. If you guys had seen my previous benchmark video from back then, you probably also saw that I did include video editing benchmarks from Vegas Pro and Handbrake. Only reason why I omitted them for this video is simply because I forgot which clip I had used, so there was no way for me to make a direct comparison, so I do apologize for that. Anyways, I hope you guys found this video to be interesting and informative. Leave a like if you did, leave your comments down below, check out the video description for my other videos and ways to support the channel. If you're interested in more content like this, then make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.